Welcome back to part two of advanced color correction. There was actually a update I needed to run to get After Effects to work on my machine, so thanks for your patience there. We will pick up where we left off in the previous video. If you are wondering what was done in the previous video, you can check on the comment in the comments uh, in the in the summary section on the YouTube video. It'll have a link to the previous video if you've landed on part two. So what we're doing here now, we've looked at the basic color corrections that are available to you in Premiere, but if you want to get something a little bit more advanced, then we need to open up After Effects. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to right click on the clip that we want to send to After Effects and click on Replace with After Effects Composition. What happens there is After Effects is going to open up and it's going to say, OK, you want to create a new project. Let's give it a name and save it somewhere. So let's do this. And what it does is it opens up the video clip and it inserts it into After Effects. And now the cool thing about staying inside of the Adobe ecosystem is that any changes that I make and save inside of After Effects are automatically translated back into Premiere without having to export clips and import things and keep track of versions. So that's one of the real powers of working inside of uh, these Adobe products. So the interface is similar, but you know, different. Uh, where we're really going to work is down here in this uh, what looks like a timeline and also on top of this clip. So if we scroll through we see we have the same thing in After Effects as we do in Adobe Premiere. But what we're actually going to be doing here is adding in lights. And when I say lights, it's not like we're going to change the contrast and the brightness of the image, but we're actually going to add lights in 3D space. So what does that mean? All right, follow along with me and I'll show you. Uh, the first thing that we have to do is very important and if you miss it, you're not going to be able to add any lights into your video. So where it is, is it's over here under this cube, I'm going to click on that. And what it does is it enables my layer to accept 3D effects. Those are effects that happen in the X, Y, and Z spaces on my video. Almost imagine like when you originally shot the video being put back into that space. And if I moved a light close to your face, it would be very bright. And if I moved it far away, it would get less bright. That, those are the controls that we have in this 3D space inside of Adobe After Effects. Then I'm going to right click in this gray space and go New Light. And this light I'm going to name Ambient. And I'm going to select Ambient in this drop down. Again, I'm naming this light Ambient and I'm selecting Ambient. And I'm going to keep the color white. And what the color white means is that it's not adding any blue or orange to the, to, the, uh, to the video. Now, if you had a video that was very blue, you might want to add some orange to counteract that. If you have a video that's very orange, you might want to add a blue light to counteract that and get you back towards a, a better white balance. Let's just keep it white for now. Intensity is going to stay at 100, and I'm going to click OK. And if you did that, then what you're going to notice is nothing happens to your image. That's because we need to mess around with some of the controls of the light. So with ambient selected, I'm going to tap A on my keyboard twice, basically AA. And what that's going to do is drop down some of the controls for my light. Again. If I hit A, it, it twirls it back up. So I'm going to select Ambient and hit AA on my keyboard. And then in here, I'm going to click and drag this percentage up, and my video gets brighter, and down, and my video gets dimmer. So what I'm doing is I'm scrubbing these numbers. Click and drag to give us a little bit more brightness. And you'll already know, or you'll already notice that the 
video gets brighter, but it's not like the color correction and lighting that we did inside of Premiere. It's a little bit more intelligent than that. Now, this is a little bit too bright for me, so I'm going to put it closer to about... Let's leave it around about 150. Now it's not perfect, but we're going to add one more light. So now I'm going to right click again and go new, light, and call it spot. So I've named my light spot, and I'm going to use light type as spot. Leave everything else as default and click OK. So what we've done here is we've added a spotlight to our video. So the way to think about it is that this small circle is basically your light. And this large circle is the beam it casts. So imagine that you had a flashlight, right? This flashlight, this, this here, is like the light bulb in the flashlight. And this gives you an idea of the cast that you're getting. And then you have three arrows. These allow you to move that spotlight in X, Y, and Z space. So follow along with me here and click on the X. Now remember back to your algebra and geometry. X is left and right. So this allows me to move the spotlight left and right. Y allows me to move the spotlight up and down. So let me get the light in a position that I would like. Now imagine that we're producing this piece originally. Where would you put the light? Would it be over here? Hmm, probably not. It would probably, whoops. This happens all the time, so Command Z or Control Z is your friend, that's undo. We just need to select our light again. And we would probably put our light like this. So we've used X and Y to position our light. If we wanted to use Z, remember again Z is in and out. Remember if you get Z, if you move a flashlight closer to someone's face, the beam grows narrower. Whereas if you take it away, it gets a little bit more broad. But now we have, we've lost control of aiming our light, right? We've only focused about moving it in X, Y, and Z space. So how do we aim the light? See this little point here? That is how we move the light around. It's, now it's become like a spotlight for us. So look for a second if I really zoom in here. And then now you can see how that spotlight effect happens a little bit more. Now obviously that's a little bit too close, but we're going to point it basically at our nose and then give me a little bit of Z on this to pull out a bit. Now, that's pretty good. Might do that a little bit. So that's how my clip now looks. And again, this is all subjective, so you need to look at it the way that, that you would. I might even zoom in. Uh, no, I think that that's pretty good. Again, let's see what we started with. I'm going to click these, these eyeballs over here. I'm going to click them off. That is what we started with, believe it or not. And then by turning on the spotlight and the ambient light, we get a much nicer effect. Now, do we want to add a little bit of color in here? I'll click A again and choose a color and go a little bit into the sort of the orange spectrum and add just a tinge of color to kind of brighten her up. You might not even notice the change, but if we go to something a little bit more intense, then yeah, it's, it's a little bit more intense, but maybe just a tinge of orange to kind of brighten her up a little bit. So what we've done in this video is we've imported our clip from Premiere. We first added an ambient light that we turned up the intensity a little bit 
but not fully because we were going to add that spotlight on afterwards. And you can see the difference by toggling on and off that spotlight. So the ambient light got us almost there, but the spotlight really brings it home. So we added that ambient light, we added that spotlight, and then we adjusted that spotlight in X, Y, and Z space. And then we also aimed it. Now here's the cool thing, is remember our original clip in Premiere? What I'm going to do is hit Save inside of After Effects, and then pop back over to Premiere. And you'll notice that the changes came from After Effects without us having to do anything. We didn't have to export. If you were not using an Adobe ecosystem, what you would have to do is export your video from, say, Final Cut, bring it into After Effects, export it from After Effects, and bring it back into Final Cut. But by staying inside of uh, the Adobe ecosystem, you get much more control and ease of use here. So that is the end of our tutorial. We've now got a video clip in here that is embedded into our video that we don't need to do anything further. When we export, it'll render all of the effects uh, very easily from Premiere or from After Effects into Premiere and then out into our final piece. Do we need to do this for every single video? No. But if, you, if there's a clip that you have to use that you're not satisfied with the lighting or Perhaps you have a little bit of extra time in editing the piece and you, you really want to kind of adjust the image um, or it's a, you know, a high value piece. You want to adjust that. Easily go in, link your clip into After Effects and uh, make the changes and they'll carry right back into Premiere. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for joining me.